Hey, you have tuned in to The Young Medic Show, a show that focuses on educating young people through deep discussions, focusing on varying health topics. Do back, do back, Tim. Plus, all right, cool. The same area, or maybe the same color, or ethnicity. Hey, you are tuned in to The Young Medic Show, a show dedicated to educating young people about their health and well-being through deep discussions, through varying health topics. My name is Joshua, I am a second year medical biochemistry student and I'm going to be the moderator for this conversation and I'm going to be joined by two medics which are... Hi guys, my name is Divas and I am a second year medical student at the University of Southampton. Uh, hello, my name is Khalil and I'm a third year medical student at the University of Leeds. Okay, and today's topic is sexual health relating around sexual diseases specifically. Um, to today's show we're going to be covering a lot of things like the facts about the most common disease, um, sexual transmitted diseases as well as we're going to have a guest come on talking about how they have uh, their experience with sexual health and how they've been tested and what experiences they've gone through maintaining their sexual health and we will also be doing some myth busting for you guys, um, whatever myths that you guys believe in um, we know there's a lot of myths surrounding sexual health, so we will myth bust that for you guys and provide you with a lot of information, so please listen in. So, sexual health. Go on. So, I'm just going to tell you guys the definition of sexual health by the World Health Organization. So, it's a state of physical, emotional and mental and social well-being in relation to sexuality. And for sexual health to be um, sustained, um, it must, like all persons must have uh, respected, protected and fulfilled rights. And with that, since we're going to be diving into STIs, it's probably best to get a definition of that you got. Yeah, yeah. So like STIs, like, it stands for sexually transmitted infection. So this means that it can be passed from one person to another uh, through sexual contact. That can be vaginal, um, oral and anal sex. So um, STIs can also be referred to as sexually transmitted diseases as well. Okay, cool. Um, so what kind of STIs are out there, like the most common ones that I'm sure a lot of people already know, but it's always good to go through them. Yeah, I feel like the most common ones that people know are kind of like HIV, um, chlamydia, gonorrhea. Yeah, and then we have the trichomoniasis as well, so there, as well as chlamydia, we have HBV as well. Also, another common one as well. Yeah, okay, what about um, so syphilis? We hear a lot of um, bad things about it, but not everybody knows the facts, so like. Do you guys want to elaborate on that? Um, syphilis is a bacterial yeah. infection. Okay. Um, in terms of the signs and symptoms, do you know a couple? Yeah, some of the signs and symptoms given here. So like some of the signs and symptoms include like small painless sores or ulcers. So that typically appear in the penis, vagina, or around the anus, but they can occur in other places as well. So, some mouth. so that's not very, <laughs> very famous, so that's one. So you can also have like a blotchy red spot that often affects like the palms and like the hands as well as the soles of the feet as well. That's another one as well that we're looking at there. And you can have small skin growth. So that's another similar to kind of, it's similar to genital warts as well. So they may develop around the vulva for the woman. So that's around the red vagina and as well as the bottom of the anus for both men and women. So there's that as well. And you can often just get like tiredness headaches and joint pains but then that's kind of just for generally just STIs in general but the ones that he mentioned are specifically for mm -hmm. syphilis. Mm -hmm. Okay um so they got a bit I've got <laughs> I've got syphilis now like how do I go about um first of all even realizing I have it I've, I've got the symptoms there so who would I go see about that about getting tested and uh, treatment wise? I think like the first thing you should always do is um, get tested. I think especially if you're sexually active, um, it's important to just regularly get testing. So um, once you do that, then you can go to the next step, which would be just to see your GP yeah. or someone mm -hmm. like that. I see a health yeah. professional, that's going to say like likely thing. So if obviously you're showing any, anyone know of those symptoms, it's always good to like, you know, see a health professional about it. Like I think it was related in the samples, like, Places like NHS websites can go to or people you can call. Just main thing is all about getting tested because for something like syphilis as well, if it's left untreated for like years, so they can it can spread to the brain or other parts of the body, and that can go like serious long term condition in the future. So that's kind of what we're trying to prevent. So, so like the earliest you see it, just the better yeah. because the yeah. treatment you get will work better basically. Okay. Yeah. I'm gonna check that just. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um. 
there was also another one. It's not as common because I've never really heard about it too much. Um, but I can't even say it properly to be honest. Chica Myasis. Yeah, I can't. I'm struggling myself. Yeah, yeah. it's a trick or money Yeah. yeah. So do you guys know anything about that? So I know it's caused by a parasite. So a small parasite. It's that parasite's gonna go a trick or money by the nose and focus on the name. So like a woman. That parasite will mainly affect like the vagina and the tube that carries carries the urine out from the u- from the body. So that's the urethra, I think, comes there. So in men, that commonly affects like the urethra as well. But in most cases, it can affect the head of the penis as well, or the prostate gland and the gland near the bladder. So that helps to produce semen, and because that can become infected as well. But then cover the symptoms as well. Yeah, it's the it's a parasite, right? So yeah, <laughs> I mean, yeah. If, if you just look at some of the symptoms that it says that it kind of covers, so that they can develop between a month of infection. So if you get it, it can develop between a month mm. of getting the infection. But up to half of people will not develop symptoms as well, because you can see the huge problem with that. You won't develop the symptoms if you do have it. So, but it can still, you can still transmit, pass it on to others as well without yeah. showing symptoms of it. So that's why, exactly why it can be a huge problem there. So like, um, it has similar symptoms to other kind of SDIs as well. But of course, as we said, a lot of people, half the people that actually get it, don't show any symptoms. So that's why it's always good to like kind of get tested if you're sexually yeah. active. So it's kind of important. Yeah, basically. Um, it's a parasite. Oh, <laughs> just feeding off me, greedy. So HPV, I know the cause of cervical cancers um, and it's prevalent in women, but um, I know men can also get it. But does it could then cause prostate cancer, perhaps? Um, I think it can definitely be a, what's it called a byproduct of the HPV. So I know that the HPV vaccine can um, cause cancer of like the anus, vagina and the penis so then it can probably will lead to um, prostate cancer there's one that we all know <laughs> um it's been really going through us like we've always been told how bad it is from young um, and that is hiv and then it leads on to aids right yeah so like what can you tell me what do you go through as a hiv patient Mm, HIV you just can't understand this like stands for human immunodeficiency virus so like it's just like it damages the cells in your immune system and like that weakens your ability to kind of fight everyday infections so therefore if you like get another kind of infection along the way if you do have HIV it's it's hard for your body to kind of fight it off because obviously you have a weakened immune system so looking at that okay you can also AIDS or something the name for it which is kind of known as acquired immune deficiency syndrome so that's kind of like that's the name used to describe it if it's like life-threatening um, infections and illnesses so that happen when your immune system has been severely damaged by HIV so you have HIV first that's kind of like natural name for it when you do get it but then AIDS is kind of like what you don't call it if it then becomes life threatening and your, the HIV has completely like destroyed your immune system so like one other kind of infection and like that's kind of it that's also another kind of yeah. infection. also HIV is mm-hmm. more common and um, so um, sex between men like males, male to male. Mm-hmm. Um, it's also higher in people of um, Black African descent, and um, what else? It's um, also caused by again like sharing needles, syringes, and mm-hmm. that type of stuff. That's probably why it's so um, like you know you always have HIV like especially in Africa just because we are uh, most likely to get affected by it. Yeah. So yeah. it just kind of means that like, there's currently no cure for HIV, so yeah. it's not like you want to see like there's currently like this treatment they can have to end it, like help you manage it, manage the condition, help you live like a long and healthy life if you do get it. But currently right now there's no cure yeah. for it. But like I said before, when I talk about the difference between HIV and AIDS, so like the thing is with AIDS, because AIDS you can't transmit that to another person, but you can transmit HIV to another person if that makes sense. So yeah. yeah. Mm. So HIV is the actual yeah, and then um, once that the HIV actual. then obviously. Once the HIV kind of like weakens your immune system to a certain kind of level, then you would then get AIDS. So AIDS could be just be the common cold that you've gotten, and now because your body's not able to fight it, then yeah, then AIDS. So you can then get any kind of acquired infection. So AIDS, AIDS is basically the consequence of HIV. Mm. Okay, um, but with the treatment, I can live that long and healthy life. Like on my life, will not necessarily hinder it anyway, right? Uh, yeah. Um, you can live a manageable yeah, life. Yeah, you can live a manageable you. life, but again, this is black people who have HIV. It's very important that you know they're not um, like like they don't put themselves in any kind of like harm's way. For example, like um, 
like they can't really like if you have a cold like it'll be dangerous to them just to be around someone even like a like a common cold because um like i said their immune system is so weakened that that could potentially kill them mm. so um you can live a manageable life like through the help of treatment but at the same time you have to safeguard yourself because um your immune system is a lot weaker okay so taking all this information on board obviously is a lot for me um, you know all these different uh, STIs that, and, and I'm sure there's a lot more that we've not even discussed right now these are just the most common ones yeah. so um, we've talked a little bit about treatment but obviously I know for sure uh, the best cure is prevention yeah. so <laughs> prevention <laughs> I'm sure it's like something you can uh, advice you can give us right now yeah um, I think generally it's just make sure that if you're having sex then just use a condom. Um, if I remember the stats correctly, I think condoms do prevent 99% of infections. Obviously there's only that 1% that it can't, like, it can't protect 100% of everything. Um, so I think that's the safest and most um, like widely used thing just to prevent STIs. Yeah. I mean, there's other kind of ways you can prevent it as well. But I mean, I don't more come on, just not having sex. I mean, like, where you're 100 percent, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> to not get yeah, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. But obviously, like condoms and all, like you said, there's also different like the pills, the contraceptive pills. But then again, don't just help you stop pregnancy. Now, I'm thinking about it. In terms of just stopping main infection, condoms seems to be, like the most common one. I know there's female condoms as well mm. that you can also use as well in terms of just like helping and ensure that you're yeah. safe. But then getting tested regularly also help ensure that if you keep getting tested regularly, if you know you're sexually active and you're getting regular tests, regular checkups, that would help. Yeah. Okay, so guys, you've heard it for the medics themselves, just become a priest or a nun <laughs> and you'll be fine. Like, listen, you can't get sexually transmitted infection if you're not having sex. Like, okay, that's what I'm doing. I'm becoming a priest. So I'll um, see you guys at mass. Um, <laughs> but the best advice is just, you know, be tested regularly, that's the summary, be tested regularly, um, mm -hmm. always be aware of your body, be aware of yourself, be checking down there, you know, I'm sure you'd have to anyway if you're sexually active as well, people might not, might let you know, might not let you know if you're having things down there, um, but yeah, that's it for that little bit, and I think it's time to invite our little guests to provide a little bit of an insight into maintaining and upkeep of your sexual health mm -hmm. so that would be being tested and as well as other things like just getting the condoms and stuff like that so um I'd like to invite our guest um big man himself okay we're back we're joined with william so that's so, for me yeah man of course anytime you can here to educate us so you're going to talk to us about your sexual health, how you maintain it, what you do, so I'm all ears, man. Uh, well, you know, like you said, the safest form of sex is not having sex in it, so... Yeah. So, uh, you know, first thing I do is, is, is take it easy. I already spoke with father, I'm there. Take it easy. But uh, I believe previously you mentioned, it was mentioned about uh, getting regularly tested. I think, I think that's a great idea. And what I would say in my experience is, don't wait, don't, you know, be like, I'll do it tomorrow, I'll do it tomorrow. Do it ASAP, you know. Because you only get in your own head, you only, you know, get, you, you get all paranoid and, and... And what I think people forget is, some of these are actually symptomless. So, if you've had sex with a new person or you've, you know, didn't have a condom or you couldn't control yourself, uh, I, I, would, I would advise go go get tested if you don't want to you know do the whole process and, and go meet with a clinician they have DIY test kits you know you just do some blood, uh, blood samples and, and a urine sample and uh, yeah like you should be all right and another thing I feel like I'm wrong right now make sure your partner as well like you know have that open honest communication with yeah, whoever you're with that you know especially if you've had something, I think everyone has the right to know, no kind of vibes, but yeah, like, of course, of course, can't be lying to people, can we? Um, oh so, like, personally, then, have you been tested? Uh, I have been tested a couple of times. I've done a DIY one, and I've also done the one in the uh, clinic, and I'd say go to the clinic, you know, oh, you have so a professional, 
they look after you. They, you know, they look after you. <laughs> Are they looking after you, bro? <laughs> huh? Because it can be a bit daunting, especially if you if you felt like you was at risk. Like, oh, okay. and you know, there's no shame. You know, there's nothing wrong with having sex. There's nothing wrong with enjoying your life. But you know, don't be like I don't know, like hesitant. Yeah. To, to keep yourself clean. It is your health mm -hmm. at the end of the day, you know. You would go in happily yeah. with a flu or anything you can go, you would go in, but these are the same things it's just going on down there. So I feel like society is just what's um exaggerated and made you feel so insecure about going to the clinic. So it's just just go um get checked, you feel better when they tell you you've got nothing in it. Like and exactly. even Exactly. Exactly you feel it's so a great when that text is just comes through saying your results are come through clear, it's like <laughs> <laughs> it's negative in it. They say if it's if you don't have an STI which we say it should um, be negative. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. So for once negativity is a good thing. Um <laughs> And tell your parents. <laughs> now I know that's a sticky one, huh? especially in certain households. But it's like, you know, if you pick up something, and you know, and it might be something a bit like more fatal, or it makes you infertile or something oh. like that, you know. Be better be open, honest, you know, and you don't have awkward conversations five, ten years. No, oh, I did. So tell your parents that like, if you do have the condition. Like, yes. Yeah. Cool, cool. That's what I'm saying. I, I feel even if you just got tested now, or you're just worried about it. I don't know, but I know everyone's relationship with their parents is different. Yeah. <laughs> if, not, if not your parents, just speak to like your close friends, friends yeah. like your close girls, your close guy <clears throat> friends, just whoever you can trust really. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah, so once you get that text message, you're free, you can, you feel on top of the world, you're going to be fine. Even if you are positive, there's support there for you, there's yeah. treatments there, um, you will be fine. Yeah. So, yeah. You know. fine. Uh, with, with a lot of these as well, like the earlier you know and the sooner you get the treatment, a lot of them can be cured. Mm. Like syphilis and, and like uh, the HPV and stuff like that. Mm. If you get the treatment like ASAP, ASAP before they develop, then you're alright. But like syphilis, part, if if you let that one develop, no, it's, it's, it's game over. Like yeah. it makes you infertile. Like you can even pass it on to your children. Yeah. Like if a woman has it, mm. Her child can be born with syphilis. Syphilis is always onto the brain as well. It can affect the brain as well. Like Meninges around the brain. Too. Damn. <laughs> but it's treatable with penicillin on the early stages. So get tested regularly. You know, make sure you're on top of it. Okay. All right. Um, but also, like your experience. So, like, would you like walk us through? So you going getting tested? What what you went through? Um, just what happened? So people can get an idea, and maybe it's less daunting for them. So you know what's coming. Alright, so it's like obviously different clinics open at different times. The one I went to was the one that's open really, really early. So you, you go in there, they'll ask you like, do you have symptoms or are you just coming for like a general checkup kind of thing? If you have symptoms, you kind of like prioritise. Uh, and then you're given the option, either you want to do a DIY kit or do you want to uh, see the clinician? I personally advise see the clinician, it's just a lot easier. You have someone to, to make sure the tests are you know done properly and stuff. And you know, you'll wait, that wait can be quite nervous because you're like, oh what's wrong with you, what's wrong? And then you go into the room, you know, they take your blood sample, you do the urine test. A week or so, two weeks later, they come back to you with your with your with your results. Now, if you've got something, they call you. So oh. You know, if you get a if you get a phone call, you know, you got a problem. Then, yeah. But overall, I would not that two weeks between when you done your test and when the results came out, I would not stress about it because it was a very cool quote I heard on the podcast a, few, a couple of years ago. And it's like, even if the results don't go the way that you wanted, you was not upset twice. You know, so at least during the time when you don't know, just you know, don't stress out about it. And then if it is the case. Then move from there instead of stressing and then stressing again. Like, mm. yeah. makes sense, makes sense. Yeah. And just like you said, like between the test or the all of that was free, wasn't it? Yeah, and all free. free. Yeah, okay. all free. Fucking British government. <laughs> <laughs> so the general rule, just with upkeep and maintaining etc., I'll just be checked regularly, um, <coughs> especially if you're very sexually active. So. And you can get a new partner as well, and you don't need a condom. Yeah. You just check. They do, they do uh, what's it? What's the locker for? Um, recommend. Yeah. Every new partner, you, you should go get checked. Okay. Because the condom is 100% right. 
So, okay. Um, we will now be going on to myth busting because obviously there's a lot of misconceptions that people have with sex and there's a lot of things society will tell you, your friends will tell you, your boys, your girls will tell you that is true but it actually isn't and it's best to have the right information and not be really have fear for no reason but also fear the right things you know yeah, yeah. so I want you guys to let me know okay well the myth is that you can't get STIs through oral sex which is false um, so basically there's less of a chance of you getting an STI through or sex, but some um, um, infections such as um, syphilis and gonorrhea are actually more, you're more likely to get through um, oral sex. So, like I said before, it's just best just to always use a condom. And um, if you are like performing like um, oral sex, then you can use a dam, which is a thin piece of fabric that you can use to cover your genitals, which through that way you can also protect yourself from getting any infections. Okay, I heard um, obviously HIV for example is a virus and but it's in the blood so it's not really going to be transmitted through oral sex unless you have um, a cut in your mouth mm. or they have a cut on their genitals. Yeah. That's the only way it could um, be transferred if the blood, if their infected blood can get into your system in yeah. any way. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So, okay. Yeah. Alright, is there any others? Yeah, there's people. also like the fact that STI has to go away on their own. Like that's also another common myth mm -hmm. of like obviously we talked about it all the way throughout. Like STI, they won't just like go away. It just delaying treatment just means it will cause long lasting, long term effects. That's the kind of thing if you delay your treatment for it. And you also risk passing it on to other sexual partners that you have because obviously if you don't get treatment because obviously you, you're not showing any symptoms, but you're having multiple sexual partners, you don't know that you have a condition like we said. They don't show any symptoms. The majority of the STI, so you just risk passing it on to other people as well. So. Okay, so just be checked regularly. And just yeah, be if you have regular really sexual yeah. partner, then yeah, that's one way to go. Okay. Um, okay. Um, another thing I've heard as well, like um, that make things so much easier for you um, regarding with clinics is that um, if you go in and let's say you've now tested positive, um, you can and you had a partner at a time or a other sexual partners that you would need to notify and if you can't handle doing it yourself the clinic has that option to notify them for you i'm mm -hmm. sure you just have to give them the contact info of the people and you could they will notify you notify them um anon anonymously um so it just makes it less of a daunting thing as well so it's like an added benefit that the clinic can do for you mm -hmm. um in regards for in regards to the support that um is available to you regarding sexual health and other issue, uh, sexual issues that you might have and questions, there's some stuff in the description box below that you could look at. Um, obviously to get more information on what we talked about today in this episode and just to further your um, knowledge and your, so you can really better be better equipped to treat, to be able to handle the issues yourself and to just take care of your sexual health as well as educate others as well. Just a disclaimer, um, where I'm not a medic, I'm not a doctor, uh, they, they're not doctors, they're medics but they've not got that DI in their name, um, I know he's not. So yet, yeah, yeah yet. yet, we'll soon have two more doctors <laughs> soon guys, wait on them. But any advice that's been given um, is to be taken with a great sort of um, Go into the description box below and find that support and so you'll be able to educate yourself a bit more and better with the support provided. And yeah, thank you so much for watching. Um, I know it's been, good, been a great episode, I've learned a lot. Myths have been busted, lovely stuff. Um, so obviously you guys go subscribe to the channel. Um, thanks for Creation Foundation for producing it and go follow their socials guys and all. I know you would love to see some doctors in the future mm -hmm. and just to update on William's life we, uh, we yeah, and the results came back the way I wanted them to mm -hmm. oh crazy, crazy, crazy. <laughs> well that's a little update for you guys so you guys can see it. <laughs> so follow us on socials and um, thank you for watching